Hey everybody, this is Sammy McAtee, and this is my action research project on how feedback and praise impact mindset culture in a fourth grade classroom. So this idea came about with this quote on the left about learning environment and how that thrives on trust and valuable feedback. And that's, that allows students to express themselves and innovate their ideas confidently. And that came from Trevor Reagan. You can see him there on the right. He is a researcher and studies learning the process of learning. His foundation is Train Ugly, so please go ahead and check him out over there. It's some really, really, really awesome, awesome stuff. So with his speech, it sparked my idea on feedback, and I wanted to know more about how that affects my students. So I dug into mindset. We all know mindset, I'm sure, if you're in an educational field. Fixed mindset, it leads to the desire to want to look smart, so you don't want to take risks. You want to just stay where you're at and not do anything that's going to make you, you know, fail. And then growth mindset gives you that desire to learn and take risks and try new things and know that it's okay to make mistakes. So that paired with the type of feedback we're getting, and that was the diagram on the right there by John Hattie. He does a lot of awesome research um, with feedback and learning. So that's kind of his diagram there. So with those two, I came to the conclusion that praise, which we all do, I did all the time in my classroom, is not really okay. It's not a powerful form of feedback in an academic setting. Non-academic, go for it. That could be a time to use it. But in an academic setting, it only should be focused with the process feedback, and I'm going to dig into that here in a little bit, so just keep that in mind, process feedback. From Hattie, we learned that feedback should do these things. It should focus on the performance of the student related to the task that they're doing. It should provide information about their where they're at now. It needs to be constructive, timely, and needs to foster that agency and ownership in their learning. So for mine, uh, my action research takes place in a rural Midwest school in Iowa. You can see the demographics there on the top, student population, free and reduced lunch. So I feel like kind of your typical urban, rural Midwest school. So my project would take place with two fourth grade classrooms, 46 students total in fourth grade. And then my role would be a third year teacher, strong advocate for equitable student learning, and to study deeper into that concept of a learning environment. My research method would be a case study. It's qualitative, as you can see there, and it would help me to explore the depth, actions, and reasons for the way that students respond to feedback in different ways. I would collect that by using semi-structured interviews with my colleagues and students that are in the research observation, lots of observation, that would be the core, excuse me, of the data collection. Uh, Self-reflective journal would be more for the teacher and myself in keeping those biased and unbiased opinions out there. And all three of these would lead to that triangulation that we talked about in class. Breaking down the data, it kind of, in my opinion, goes in two ways. It can go teacher to student feedback, which is when we're talking to our students and student to student, so peer conversations. And then I broke each of those down into kind of four categories. So when I take all the observation notes, they could be coded and categorized based on these four things. So focused on the person or outcome, focused on the process, and both of these have no praise. Feedback given with praise, so if that made a difference, and then non-academic praise given. My hypotheses here with my research is here's the person process outcome again. So personal feedback is you are so smart, you are a good dancer. The process is great job on that test, you must have worked really hard. Uh, what could you do better next time? Outcome, wow, you got an A, great win, let's celebrate. So these two are the ones they say don't do it. Process is where we need to stay and that's why, that's why that one is a little bigger. So if students were given feedback, focused on the process, then hopefully it would instill better work ethic and help them stay more focused. If students include specific, if the teacher includes specific prompts, then students could use the feedback to work and reflect later during their conferring time to help improve their goals. If it's focused on effort and process, then there's going to be a stronger relationship between teacher and student. And then if students become more acceptable to feedback, then they're more willing to listen and make changes. 
a lot of the same things here with student to student. If students are taught to use specific helpful and kind feedback, you're gonna see things like this. So this is from the study Trevor Reagan did. They had, this is actually kindergartners and they drew insects. And the kindergartners met with five other students that gave them process-based feedback. And these were the drawings that they came back with, the same kids, after meeting with five other kids. So you see that it gives students a chance to be more open and make changes and to keep their revision process going. They're not okay with settling. And that's that shift from that fixed to growth mindset there. And then I'll let you pause and read some of these other hypotheses if you would like. Next steps, this is kind of what would be laid out in the future here. So August to September, I would present the data to my team about the feedback that I found. And I'd hopefully find five to 10 teachers that would participate in the study. And then the next step is when the teachers would say, awesome, great, I'd ask the parents for approval or consent. October to December would be the data collection time with interviews, observations, and journals with all the teachers. January to February, we'd analyze and interpret that data based on what we see. And then in March, I'd see myself present findings that what I, of what I have so far, and then decide if I need to do more research or if I have enough to back up my question then. And then just some kind of topics to reflect on for myself too is to know that when they're participating, I think these first three bullets are great terms for them to know. Growth mindset culture must be first established. So if they don't have, if their children have no idea about growth mindset, that's where they need to go first before they take part in the study because that's a big part of this. Growth mindset leads to a positive mind frame that accepts feedback and promotes the ability to invest in one's learning, and that praise can be used in non-academic time. So I tell all the participants this, and then I would observe whether they stay on that track or if they go back to those feedback things from before. And then also just creating a culture within my classroom that celebrates mistakes, keeping the culture in my classroom consistent, and then creating that feedback pattern that will help all students. So that was fast. I tried to keep it as close to under seven minutes as I could, but feel free to flip back through the video and look at whatever else you would like. Thank you so much.